Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Monday, August 12th, 2019. Uh, lots of good stuff today to update, but we can keep it quick. Uh, again, this is just a follow-up to Friday's closing uh, market video. I also did a front page post. We'll get to that in a second uh, earlier this morning uh, before the market opened today on the futures. Looking at those trend lines that I highlighted on Friday right here, um, you could see that they broke down before. Uh, QQQ did and so we had some sell signals there and I uh, want to mention uh, talk about those gaps that uh, we had from Friday so let's let's start out there let's just take a quick recap of today how it played out all right so these were this was posted before the market opened about 40 minutes if you remember I already did a, a midday update for you this is just a recap of that um, but you also would have had this post sent out to you by email um, before the market opened today showing here's that trend line this same as a QQQ and SPY up trend lines except we're looking at futures these are NQ the NASDAQ 100 futures it gives you a heads up so in pre-market you can see we took out the trend lines with nice impulsive selling and uh, you know I stated my preferred scenario uh, have us going down here, continuing lower, and I still think that'll be the case. So that was that was then, and you know, I mean, you know, if it proved to be, it, we were at support. So had that support held, uh, and still, you know, not to say we can't recover tomorrow. Uh, that would certainly help the bullish uh, case there, showing you a couple upside targets if you are bullish or long, or looking to get long. Uh, whereas this is still my preferred scenario. So again, let's look at that 7604 roughly and then 7555 uh, That was then and this is now uh, So you can see that we it was certainly a, a level worth watching we consolidated on all day Just about you can see a lot of consolidation on around that level today right on that 7604 ish level and then boom next target hit now that level was you can see right about here is the top of Monday's gap. So those are the levels I'm really hyper focused on QQQ and SPY. We're going to get to those charts in a second. So we pretty much, in fact, we made almost a perfect backfill of that gap in QQQ. Remember, if you're new to trading or investing, these are futures. You might not trade futures. They're not going to show that gap because futures trade uh, almost around the clock. You do have some gaps around weekend. They shut down for the week, you know, on Friday after the market closes, a little bit afterwards, open again Sunday night, and they shut down each day for a brief period of maintenance and kind of square up, but it's it's a short shutdown, so you rarely see gaps in, in the future. So um, we'll look at QQQ in a second. Let's just take a look at uh, SPY before we do that. Or rather ES, I should say. ES, uh, this is the S&P 500 E-mini futures contract. There it is. Yes, uh, same story. We had those uptrend lines, and this this gave us a sell signal. Um, you know, uh, before the market even opened today, and we were coming down. I had a uh, support here at uh, 290, 2894.50, right there, with the next support there, and this one's even more important, right there, 2883. Why? Because that is that level there was the. Uh, uh, the bottom of the gap last Monday's gap down. I'm talking a week ago today and QQQ was right there again Not reflected in the futures because the futures dropped before the market opened then the then uh, Spy opened right here. We tested tested tested. So Anyways that that would have been the bullish scenario again. I stated clearly that uh, this was my uh, preferred scenario coming down there to test that gap and then finally break down so Again, that was this morning before we opened, and let's see where we closed today. There we go, ES. Uh, I had it zoomed out here. Let's zoom back in. There it is. Uh, you can see that we oh, some fat candles there. There you go. Uh, a little bit better. Uh, so there it was. And look, look at this is just a. Uh, it never fails to amaze me. And like I say, technical analysis tends to work a lot better. That's what traders are flocking to right now. And you can see that's a very well-defined level. And look how many. These are one-hour candles, 60-minute candles. One, two, three, four, five, six. That body's on it. Brief little spike, that little skinny part, the white part. That's called a shadow or a tail when it's down below. Uh, seven. All the seven, Almost the entire day. Seven hours of trading on that level. What does that mean? Well, it tells me it is a certainly a significant support 
uh, or was intraday. And so when it broke and when the, finally a 60 minute candle closed below it, boom, now that took us right down the, the biggest, most impulsive candle of the day, other than when we, of course, got the trend line break this morning. That was your sell signal. So, you know, it's TA 101. If you were, you know, catching, get, watching the futures in the morning, um, you could, uh, or overnight, or you had a, a limit order to set to fill overnight while you were sleeping, that was a sell signal there. Um, I should say a buy, it's called a sell stop order. Sell stop order is if you don't have a position, you put a sell stop saying if um, ES crosses below this trend line or below a certain value, send off an order. And if you're, you know, trading that way with those conditional orders, you want to then have it immediately, you know, set a stop somewhat above. But either way, it was a nice trade to be made. And boom, right down, there's that 2883 uh support right there and then that so that target was hit and in fact we closed a hair below it so this is a to be continued scenario now let's look at the futures uh gold members by the way i've just finished uploading a video to uh our, yeah, gold and silver members of the site a video on gold silver and the precious metal stocks uh some important updates there that uh, i think are worth um pointing out at this time so that video will be out uh, I should have that one out to you guys before this one comes out because that one just finished uploading to YouTube. All right, so I digress. Back to the uh, charts. Let's look at SPY and QQQ. Okay, here are those 60-minute charts. Uh, remember where we picked it up last week? Uh, we had, there's the big old gap right here from last Monday, a week ago today, and almost perfectly backfilling that gap. You can see uh, this is technical analysis 101 right to the gap spy entered the gap so basically there was your you know we had over the last week or so we had an objective short right there right at my box you know bounce targets on spy and qqq the next one came on the break of the trend line we've been in a downtrend since you can see i have this downtrend right here here's a downtrend line added that's one thing you want to watch you know if you're bullish you're looking want to go long Look for an impulsive break above that. That might give you a sell signal. Shorts can maybe short a bounce back to it. But at this point, um, you know, the price action is is has done nothing but confirmed uh, the bearish outlook, the bearish scenario. Again, going back, you know, to my analysis from last week where we had the big, you know, the bounce off the 200-day EMA and a lot of support levels in the market and then the big green candle which was very indicative of a, a buying climax just as those buying climaxes we had back here uh, that I highlighted last week followed by big red candles and then really the death blow is when you take out the uh, lows of those those buying climax those green candles on these counter trend bounces so that was the Again, still potential because all we've done now, we've taken it out, but we be we back tested some pretty important backfilled, I should say, and tested from above those big gaps from last week. Here, I'll take all the lines off and you'll see it a little bit better here. Uh, there we go. So there it is. There's your gaps right there. I put a crosshair here at the gap. Q, Q, Q. Same story on SPY. So we've been backfilled. And, um, you know, what today had is you know this was confirmation number one the fact we stopped at my uppermost bounce targets and then reverse confirmation number two now or step two let's say was the fact we undercut took out we wiped out that candle so what does it mean besides me just looking at candles and you know telling you what i think happened i know without a shadow of a doubt that anybody who bought on uh what was that last thursday got they're now smoked they're underwater uh, the higher they bought, the more they're underwater. So those people start to feel the pain. They should have, if they're, you know, responsible traders, you know, you go long, you think it's, you know, the market's on the way to new highs, you should have a stop below that candle because it's a very significant level. And that stop should be not much lower than the, the backfill because you have that support just below. So, so point is, so far, so good. Check marks across the board. The final couple check marks will come. I think the most important will be tomorrow. I'm guessing, or yeah, we'll call it that. Uh, I'm favoring a gap down because we hit those gaps today shortly before the close a little while, and then we rallied up. There was a little drift before the close. Um, to me, that reeks of you know keeping keeping those that were long that took this or bullish, keeping them in the trade, and keeping the shorts that want to be, but you know, as I mentioned, holding off, waiting to get in there, uh, keep them out. So uh, it doesn't have to happen, but when it does, it's pretty bearish. And that would be the scenario where tomorrow we gap down, 
you know, and the bigger the gap down, the better, because what it'll do, it'll then lead to, you have a lot of trap longs left over from this point. And of course, not to mention, you know, months of longs right here. The market has already wiped out. Here, let me just do this. Um, from this is the low point right here. So I'm going to measure. We're going to go back to this low candle from right there uh, at the recent lows. Again, that was about 281.69, you can see. And I'm on SPY. It'll look even worse on QQQ. 289.61. Or was it? Wait, 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 where was I? Let me go back there. Two, no, 282.25. I'm sorry. So I need to go over here to 282.25. Right about there, so to this candle where the crosshairs are, and that was I'm looking at calendar days to the if you pop up box that's two point two months or forty six bars i mean in other words forty six trading sessions, so two and a half months of gains were wiped out right here in just a few days, just about a week or so, and that is again that's the nature of technical analysis and corrections and why it's you know lucrative to trade if you can get the short side right because in just a week you've made as much in profits as it took two and a half months on that slow grind of gains. But it also has, the thing about that, forget about how quick the gains come and sell off, is it has implications. All these people, you know, they were trapped right here. Those that didn't capitulate and throw in the towel after that, they started to get, the, you know, this we call this a hopium rally. Uh, they got excited, think, ooh, okay, Kramer was right. He told me to hold on to my stocks or whoever. I don't even listen to him. I don't know what he was saying, but I imagine buy, buy, hold. Um, at that point, they're happy, but now we take another leg down. And again, this is why if we start to move down from here, I expect impulsive selling. Because at that point, this is where the pain will come. When they, you know, longs that were trapped, whether they were all in here or somewhere else, uh, or those that bought last week, then they're underwater. Or at least these guys, you know, even if they bought back here, are at the point now where they wish they would have gotten out back then. They didn't. And then it just, it's a psychological thing. And then you just get that capitulation. Plus, stops get hit. It only would be, uh, seem logical, right, to think that there's quite a few stops set below those recent lows. So, again, what my preferred scenario is, and this is kind of a micro call, I call it, and trying to zero down on not just where we're going but how we're going to get there um, is I think tomorrow we gap down and then it's pretty quick from there. There's no backing up, giving a second chance. It, anything's possible if you get it, great. And if I'm wrong, look, here's the most important thing I could probably say in this video and I said it all day earlier in the other video and I say it a lot. Support is support and tone and less broken. So what you had today was nothing more than a breakout here uh, above that level, those candles there, you know, took out, backfilled the gap, and then a successful, so far today, back test or backfill of the gap. So if you want to, you know, put the other side, put my bull goggles on, that's what I would see. You know, we all see what we want to see, you know, glass half empty or glass half full. So that's the bullish scenario. Um, I would be a fool to say that it's not possible. Um, and believe me, the technicals to me indicate a lot of a lot of going. I'm watching Deutsche Bank, uh, Commerce Bank, a lot of these. You know, the, those they're, they're, those guys are in trouble. There was some big time uh, bearish development I, I pointed out today in Deutsche Bank, and uh, it's going to have repercussions to the financial system. You know, if these those big banks uh, fail, and, and of course our banks are are looking really lousy too right now, the financial sector. But I won't, don't want to digress. I don't want to go into sector analysis now. Um, I think the only thing that's going to make this happen is a very, very believable, I don't know, I don't know why people believe what half the tweets that come out of uh, Trump as it is now, but uh, a compelling enough tweet that people believe there's, you know, progress made in the in the trade wars or something along those lines. Because I think that's that would be certainly a catalyst that could kind of undo, if you will, this uh, precarious technical posture that we're in right now. So, and what I meant to uh, the whole tweeting thing, you know, that you're going to, you're going to get those. When the market starts to sell off, two things are all but guaranteed. Number one is uh, the president will come in some point with a, some kind of tweet that's intended to be bullish for the market, whether it's you know, progress on the trade wars or not. And then you're also going to get the Fed mouthpieces coming out, parading out, you know, in their, in their speeches and spewing out the more dovish, you know, speak about, you know, additional chance of rate cuts going forward and all that. Uh, those are about the two guarantees you'll get if the market starts to take another sharp slide down. 
and uh, if it doesn't need it maybe you don't get that stuff so that's where we're at uh, let's look at QQQ and that's it you know same story really not much more to say on that because we came in right on there's that gap uh, Monday's gap pretty much where we came down today and so that's it we're in I think an important inflection point um, this tomorrow would be bullish a defense of that level especially to get back above the green candle so if you want what I think right now are the battle lines uh, the important levels is uh, bulls want to retake and get back above last Thursday's big green candle uh, bears want to take out that gap and I think this although this is the final line in the sand support right here at least near term you take out the 200 day EMA you take out last week's lows right there uh, that should would I would think you know barring a, a brief whipsaw signal and a fake down you know fake out uh, that should do the trick but I I think tomorrow I think if we get this or anytime this week we could we could bounce around here for a day or two so as long as look that's that's it so there's the box right there I'll draw it you know, making a mess with these candles here let me do that box for you and try to at the risk of oversimplifying this give you the battleground there so I think whoever wins this war or this battle wins the war right now, at least near term. Um, bears, bulls. And that's it, guys. Let's just wrap it up here. There's that same. I just jumped down to a 60-minute chart to show you the same. Remember, it's the, the you're pretty much the bottom of the gap. It could be a penny or two either way, but you, you'll again, you'll probably know it when you see it. A breakdown, you see impulsive selling, a 60-minute candle close, and again, the redder the better, as I like to say, you know, the deeper down we go. And uh, likewise, if we pop above there, is it just a little poke your head above and then come back down, you know, turtle in the shell kind of thing, or do you break out impulsively, start popping all the stops on the shorts and run up? You know, favor this. Um, but we'll we'll see. Tomorrow's another day, so we'll we'll follow up from there. Uh, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.